Alrighty, well, let's continue on with the first episode of Season 2, A Mock Time. Spock, the first officer of the Federation starship USS Enterprise, starts exhibiting irrational behavior and requests that he be taken to his home planet, Vulcan. Captain James T. Kirk and Chief Medical Officer Dr. McCoy, having witnessed one of their friends' outbursts, agrees and diverts the ship to Vulcan. En route, Kirk receives orders from Starfleet to travel to Altair 6 to represent the Federation at the inauguration ceremony for the planet's new president. Though Kirk instructs the crew to set course for Altair 6, Spock secretly changes the course back to Vulcan. Kirk confronts Spock, who claims having no memory of ordering the course change. Kirk orders Spock to sickbay, where McCoy finds his blood chemistry is extremely active for the high hormone count, a condition that will kill him in 7-8 to eight days if not treated. Spock is forced to explain that he is undergoing pond far, a condition male Vulcans experience periodically throughout their adult life, and that he must mate or die. Kirk contacts Starfleet to request, to request a diversion to Vulcan, but is denied. Kirk disobeys orders and sets course to Vulcan, believing that saving the life of his friend is more important than his career. Hmm. At Vulcan, Spock invites Kirk and McCoy to accompany him to the wedding ceremony. He explains that Vulcans are bonded as children as to fulfill the Pond Far commitment, and that T'Pring is to be his mate. T'Pring rides with Dawn, a pure blood Vulcan, with whom she has fallen in love and prefers to Spock. To Pal, Spock's family matriarch and renowned as the only person ever to refuse to see on the Federation Council, prepares to conduct the ceremony. However, T'Pring requests Knut Kalafi, her right to a physical challenge between Spock and a champion she selects. To everyone's surprise, she chooses Kirk instead of Stan. Hmm. Spock begs T'Pau to forbid it as Kirk is unaware of Vulcan rituals, but T'Pau allows Kirk to decide if he wishes to act as champion. Another champion will be selected if he refuses. Kirk decides to stay as T'Pring's champion, only to learn that this challenge is to the death. The two begin to fight with Lurfa, a traditional Vulcan weapon. Kirk is challenged by Spock's strength and agility, even in his current state, as well as the thinner atmosphere of Vulcan. McCoy convinces T'Pau to allow him to eject Kirk with the Triox compound to offset the effects of the Vulcan atmosphere. The battle continues, with Spock eventually garroting Kirk with another weapon, the Anmoon. McCoy rushes Kirk's body and declares him dead, and requests immediate transport back to the Enterprise. Spock renounces his claim on T'Pring, but not before confronting her over her choice of Kirk as her champion. She explains that she feared of losing Stant in the Canute Calafi. Instead, by picking Kirk, she would be assured she would be rid of Spock regardless of the result of the battle. Spock, his Ponfar ended, returns to the Enterprise, but not before warning Stone that having is not so pleasing, a thing after all is wanting. Aboard the ship, Spock announces his intent to resign his commission and submit himself for trial for killing Kirk. When he discovers Kirk is alive and well in sickbay, McCoy explains that the ejection he gave Kirk was a neuroparalyzer drug that merely simulated death. Spock apologizes to Kirk, stating he lost all desire for T'Pring after he thought he killed him. Later, Kirk learns that Starfleet has belatedly given the Enterprise permission to travel to Vulcan at T'Pau's request, thus absolving Kirk of disobeying orders. Hooray! Anyway, let's look at the significance of this episode. Gerald Freed's incidental music for the fight became a standard underscore for combat scenes in Season 2. It was generally spoofed during the medieval time sequence in the Jim Carrey movie, The Cable Guy. Yeah, and it's also been used by Linkara a lot in some of his episodes, but still, pretty enjoyable and a very good start to season two. I give a mock time five warp cores out of five. Well, join me next time as we learn who mourns Fred and I. So, until then, live long and prosper, everybody.